Hey, good morning, everybody. Monday, June 22nd, 2020. Hope you had a great weekend. I know I did. Hope all the fathers out there had a great Father's Day. Hope that uh, you took care of your father, too, if wherever your father is. I don't know. Just be nice to everybody. Let's get into this. How's everybody doing? Uh, let's check who is in the... Uh, we got Anthony. We got Jeff. Jareeb. Uh, Dean. There's Dean. <clears throat> James. Yelling at everybody in his all caps. Uh, I don't see a John, but that's okay. I got a knock knock from Daniel, which is always the first one that I get. All right. So what are we going to talk about this morning? Yeah, we are going to get ready for a great week. It's going to be a little weird in the beginning, though. We'll actually see what's going to happen if the market's got a little bit of fortitude to it. Let's look at the screens real quickly, see what we want to talk about. Obviously, I mentioned to you, uh, hey, Barbara, I mentioned to you on Friday, I wanted to give you two more of my walk down Main Street stocks. We're going to do that. These are going to be two bears. So these are two of the companies that I walked by and went, what in the world? If Nike's got 150 people waiting outside to get inside to shop, what's wrong with these stores? There are a couple of them there. Reversal of futures. I was trying to play a little reversal of fortunes here, but... It's actually a good one. Reversal of futures. Last night when I went to bed, futures down a little heavy. We actually have seen them climb back in. At least the futures are in the green. Implied open right now on the green is still in the red. You're down about 75 points on the Dow and a similar amount for the NASDAQ um, and the uh, NASDAQ composite and the S&P 500. We're also going to talk about some headline stocks. I've got three of them. American Express being one. Peloton. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there for you. Peloton being one of those companies that I really didn't like around the Christmas season. Didn't think that they were going to be making the splash that they did. And they have. And it keeps going. And because of that, you know what? I'm going to give it a little bit of love today. I do own the stock now. They did pull me in. So full disclosure there for you. But we'll talk about the other headline stocks. And then, of course, we're going to spend the rest of the time doing the ticker blitz your questions. We'll try to get these uh, in as good a fashion and as good a form so that we can get through them ex expeditiously. There's your nice $3 word. We'll get through them expeditiously. And obviously, uh, we've got Greg opening up the Q&A. If we don't get to it, please throw it in the Q&A, send it to the mailbag. We like reading the comments. We like also trying to put something together so that you can read it if I didn't get to cover it. Hey, Tony, it's a cloudy day in Cincinnati, isn't it? I'm looking at the Karoo Tower, the top of the Karoo Tower right now, and clouds all around. So anyhow, let's get into the, the slides here for the day. So the morning's early trade. Market was trading lower after, it's trading higher now, but lower after a rough overnight session. Continued increase in COVID-19 cases are the cost, or the, uh, the cost. We're going to see a lot of this, I think, over the next couple of weeks. Obviously, that's what's kind of derailed the market on Friday. We saw Apple announce that they're going to close some of their stores in China again. People are gearing up for another round with the COVID-19. Over the weekend, we saw a number of baseball and other professional sports teams announce that they have outbreaks of COVID-19 within their ranks. And it's not just people that work in the facilities. It's players as well. So something right now that's shaking us up over the weekend a little bit here in terms of this reopening, and especially when you look at the sports and how much people have wanted to get the NBA back and the NHL back and Major League Baseball, have them kind of act like they want to be back. It's not really going to be the case. It's going to be an interesting week this week to find out how they respond to this quickly. Um, I think that they're going to continue to push forward because obviously billions and billions on the line here. Nonetheless, I think we watch that because that's going to give us a nice little scope of what's probably going to happen on a grander scale here if we continue to see these COVID-19 outbreaks. California, Texas, Florida, all the hot states are the ones where it's breaking out right now. Watch yourself if you're in those states. Watch the trends over the next few days because this is getting to the point where with the VIX moving up above 35, people are getting a little too nervous. You can see stocks come from these levels based on the fears of that outbreak growing again. So the gold trade as a result, though, is charging back in oil. Oil's taking a break today, but oil's been strong the last couple of days. We've got a chart of gold here in a little while we'll take a look at. I've been talking about how gold is going to be that bounce around trade, the trading range until it starts to trend. And then when we trend, 
that's when you're going to be able to start kicking butt with some of these individual minor companies. Barrick Gold, all of those companies are going to start to kick in again. Today may be the day that gold breaks that range. Get your triggers ready on these individual miners is what I'm saying. And I've decided every Monday, at least, I'm going to give you guys the stats on the number of stocks that are trading above their 50-day moving average or whether they're trading above their 20-month moving average. Today, we're going to do 50-day. And 89% of NASDAQ 100 stocks are above their 50-day moving average. That number was 94% last week. 77% of the S&P 500s in the same category. That number was actually 78%, so no big change. 80% of the Dow is in the same position. That is higher than what it was last week. That goes along with the idea that we saw that infrastructure bill hit the tape, helped out a lot of the Dow companies. We've also got Boeing that's trying to pull back up again, a number of things going on there. It's interesting the leader, NDX, is starting to see that number drop here. Tells you that we could see a redistribution of investments throughout the market and start going more into some cyclicals. I think that that would be something that's actually going to start to redirect itself into the utilities, healthcare, and other safe haven sectors. We'll watch together here as it happens over the next couple of weeks. There's your shot of the S&P 500. You'll notice two things. 3,100 did not give way Friday. We had a great rally going. Apple made that announcement. Stocks came down late afternoon, bounced off the 3,100 level, closed above the 200, or I'm sorry, the 20-day moving average. There's your 200-day moving average. Look at the volume that we saw on the S&P 500 on Friday. Large, large volume. It tells you that the market's getting very sensitive, very sensitive to the idea of COVID-19 making that second round. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, something we need to watch. It's going to be a hot button this week, more so than it has been the last couple of weeks. I think the market has taken this in stride for the last few weeks as we've seen some increases, but now it's really starting to affect. And obviously news of the, uh, the attendance at uh, Pre President Trump's um, his, his showing in uh, Tulsa is kind of also rippling through that perhaps people are a little more worried, even though maybe there were some shenanigans with ticketing and such, but still you'd expect to see more people coming out. I think that's a good kind of shot of what how people are feeling. We want to go out and dine outside. I don't mind sitting next to somebody at a table that's six feet away, but you know what? When I'm standing next to somebody and arms around and that type of thing, Nope, it's not going to play. Watch at 3,100 and the 20-day moving average. A trader's trend line tried to give way last week. We saw that bounce back above because of the 200. I think we get a similar play this week. We might get a little bit of upside. I've got some calls in my portfolio. I'm hoping to close out with some profits just so that we can let this market start to get a little bit of a rest. The volatility index, similar situation here. Bounce off of 30. Look at that 35 level. If we break above 35, folks, it's a shot to 45. We'll be putting calls on in the uh, night trader system. My guess is we're still going to break below 35. We're going to try to squeak it down there. But the next touch of 30 gives you a possible trade uh, event on the VIX. And I mentioned gold earlier, 164 on the GLD shares. Right now, you're looking at 164 as being the top since April. If we break that 164, which I think right now the fear around COVID-19 and obviously the continued uh, you know, volatility in the dollar are going to do exactly that, break gold higher. We're also seeing WTI and Brent kind of try to level off right now after a 15% decline. I think you'll see the commodity trade start to run, run higher, but gold is your trade right now there. And start looking at some of these individual companies that I will be looking at along with the Night Trader Nation, because that's where some quick money is going to be made as we see this breakout finally, finally materializing gold. So let's talk about my walk down Main Street from a week or so ago. And Bob, the, the Apple news was that Apple was shuttering some stores in China because the, uh, they, they are worried about coronavirus, about the COVID-19. So that is what kind of shook the market up on Friday. Nike and Under Armour are very busy the weekend before last. All right. Well, here, I'm going to give you my view of that real quickly here, Joe. Not that I'm going to try to argue with you, but so my trip over the weekend, this was last weekend. It's been now two weekends here that I've done this. Got the same results. 
immediate trade ideas. Scan through three popular shopping areas. I actually hit a fourth this weekend um, that is down in northern Kentucky. Overall, the shopping centers remain busy. Distribution between the store, stores are, is very uneven. You got winners and losers is basically what that comes down to. I think that's going to stay the case throughout the summer. So what are two of the losers? Last week, we talked about two of the winners. Nike was one of them. To my surprise, Crocs was the other. And my kids kind of told me, hey, don't worry, Dad. Crocs are cool again. People are decorating them, yada, yada, yada. On the losing side, on the losing tally, though, Under Armour. Under Armour. So if you were with me on Friday, we talked about the fact that uh, Nike had 150 people out in front of their store. They had special queues set up just for the Nike store. It's a sizable store, so I get it. The Under Armour store in the mall I was in was just as large. Just as large. No queue, small little stubby line outside, maybe eight people waiting. Under Armour has kind of fallen out of favor with the mainstream retailer. Sure, they've got their people that are buying their, that are wearing jerseys of some sort or another. Or, you know, I see a lot of camouflage clothing that's running around that's got Under Armour. But from my perspective, and this is just me, again, man on the street, walking down Main Street, they have no broad, they're not broad out there like Nike and even Reebok. Reebok doing their throwback shoes, which are awesome. You know, Nike doing some of the same. Under Armour is just kind of doing Under Armour. Now, obviously, they've had some problems here over the last year uh, at the board level, and that revolution or that revolving door right now is kind of resulting in a stock that just can't get its find its way. And I think that's where it exactly finds it now when it should have the most vision to try to get out of this situation. So when I look at the chart, and I've looked at a couple of different things here. I've looked at the chart. I've looked at the actual numbers, the sales numbers. I look at Under Armour, and this is a stock that is going to take a long time to get itself above the $10 range. As a matter of fact, one of the things I wrote about when I was writing about Under Armour was when it gets to 10, this is going to be an area where I could sell a, a bearish debit credit or a credit spread. I could actually go out and make a good argument for it because there's a lot of option activity at the 10 strike, a lot of people looking for it to break out, and it just doesn't do it. It's somewhat resounding to or replying to its overbought and oversold signals, but it's not trading like a full-on technical stock. You can see resistance from the 50-day moving average, support from the 50-day here, and right now we're getting ready to break down below it. So when I look at Under Armour, the bottom line for you guys is, oh my gosh, Michael, you caught me on a typo. Jeez, that's what happens when you start putting uh, things in a little bit fast. You start recommending a gold company instead of a a, uh, a footwear company. No, we are not taking about talking about Anglo Gold AU. We're talking about UA Under Armour. This stock's going back down to seven here over the next couple of weeks in terms of uh, my my view on the stock. We break back down below the, the fifty level. They've got nobody in the stores right now, and you've got the risk that we could see more shutdowns. Mm. Same can be said for L Brands. Same situation. More stores to go through. Thanks, Michael. If you pick two more, you get free ice cream, I think. I think we still have that going on here. You can find two more, but I think we're deep enough that I'm safe now. Same with L Brands, though, guys. More sample sizes here because there are more stores that have to do with L Brands, whether you're looking at Lane Bryant, whether you're looking at Victoria's Secret, and they've got the Bed Bad, Beth and Batty bought Beth Path. They've got the store, the soap store. You're not going to get me to say it now. But anyhow, you've got L Brands right now based out of Newark, Ohio. Uh, so very close to here and have had an eye on it for some time here. 200 day moving average trending lower. When I went to all the stores, they were very lightly, lightly, lightly populated. And it's not that they've got an overwhelming um, catalog online that you're ordering these things through. I don't know if anybody goes and orders their lingerie through Victoria's Secret's catalog. Perhaps they do. Perhaps they don't. But when I looked at the store traffic, the lines at the store, they were small, if they had any at all. And that was across all of their portfolio, the stores that we have here in the Cincinnati area. 
stock just got rejected by its 200 day moving average is coming crashing down and 50 day moving average of 14 bucks a break below 14 dollars is going to take another 30 percent off of the stock maybe even 40 percent off of the stock and get you down to that 10 dollar 11 dollar range a nice little short here if you're looking at it from the perspective of l brands being that laggard and one of the walk down main street mm, failures, I don't want to say, but certainly a stock that I look at and say, yeah, that's something that my kids aren't buying, my friends aren't buying. That's usually a good rule that they're not busy enough that I need to be purchasing their stock. Peloton, on the other hand, stocks in the news today, buy, hold, sell. Their target got raised to $62 as Stiefel. I got dragged into Peloton in the 30s. Uh, I've got to tell you, I've got a friend that has a Peloton as well that I kind of looked at it and said, oh, that's bougie. I don't think that's, you know, that's not great. Um, it's one of those things that eh, it's great during the COVID, but he is still writing this to this day. And I even have a profile on the bike now because you know what? It's a nice workout. So I got turned into a hater of the Peloton right around here in the 30 area. And now not that I love it, but their business model's working. I thought they were expanding too quickly. They did the television commercials that upset everybody over the Christmas season, but now they're in the malls with kiosks, doing a good job of moving the merchandise, and it continues to move as they grow their Peloton nation. Peloton, a buy right now. Right now, they've got $62 at a target. I would agree. 60 bucks is where I put the pin. The short interest has gone away on Peloton, so this is strictly a trade trade. Watch it as it gets overbought. Last time we got overbought at 48, you, you saw it retrace back to 40. I think this goes up to 55, 56 bucks before we see an overbought signal. And then it's time to take your profits. Wait to get into it before you get up to 60. Chewy also had their target raised 45 to 41. You guys know how much I love Chewy. This was from Morgan Stanley. Equity weight on the uh, position right now. So they are saying they're weighted with the market. $50 we took out. We got overbought here with that 50 retested the 20 day moving average and now shooting higher again 55 bucks is the next stop for chewy right now the upgrade is going to help and then we finally got an upgrade to walmart i have been struggling with walmart for some time at the 200 day moving average this is hard to put a pin on it as a trade but when you see that they are going out and starting to work now with outside vendors to get their internet their website up to speed again get ahead of the curve that is one thing to look at and say, OK, Walmart is here to stick around in this game. They want to take that market share from Target. They want to take market share from Kroger. Our thesis is Walmart is entering an era of amplified earnings growth driven by an enhanced productivity loop, increased e-commerce scale and access accelerated technology deployment. That is what they were telling us when they got together with Shopify, we're going to go out guns a blazing and we're going to change our business model from walking in the store to pulling you in the store or sending it to you. I like the longer term play here on Walmart. I think it takes a while to get to that 135 or 130, but it's one of those stocks that gives you a little bit of that foundation for a portfolio. So we've got, my goodness folks, we've got about, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how I look at the clock here, which is great. This is exactly how I wanted to kind of uh, land things today. I get to spend a bunch of time going through ticker symbols with you, answering some of your questions. I already see something about Robinhood, which kind of gets me excited because I'm watching this Robinhood trade dynamic that's forming in the market. And that's part of that FOMO, that fear of missing out. We've got a lot of people that are millennials that are buying $100 slices of stock through Robinhood. And I think it's one of those things that ends a little poorly for the market at some point. It is the ultimate of those sentiment uh, readings that tells you everybody's bullish. And obviously when they're running around buying shares of Hertz right before they go bankrupt. It also tells you a little something about the style there. But I want to get into your questions here. So we're going to jump into that. I will pull up the screen right now for the stock charts so that we can go through your stock charts as well. I'm going to go over to the Q&A area real quickly, though, and answer some of those. Uh, we got a dozen, 13 questions. So... <laughs> GM, CJ, when new says CLSA drops covered for no noble energy, what does that mean? Well, they're simply not going to cover the stock anymore. When you look at noble energy, NE, and a lot of energy, you're going to find 
you're going to find companies right now, and it's 38 cents right now. You're going to find companies, especially in the energy sector, that are going to be going away. You know, Chesapeake obviously is one of those. Noble Energy is another one of them. They're going to be going away as the pressure from low price oil um, puts them out of business. A lot of fracking organizations are going out. When somebody stops coverage, it means they're no longer initiating a buy, hold, or sell or price targets on the stock. And it's assumed that at this point, it's going to be because they are going away. They're going into bankruptcy. Uh, think of it from J.C. Penney's Hertz, et cetera, et cetera. You'll see the analysts drop off of those companies as well. Fast Profits Trader, is that available? And if so, how? Fast Profits right now is just a, a weekly video. I'll do a new one tomorrow that'll go up on Wednesday. You can find it on money, moneymorning.com. Uh, it's right there at the top. You'll see a tab that says Fast Profits. You click it. It's about a three-minute video. I tell you how to short the dollar, actually, in the last one. Um, so they're great trades. We've been long LGI Homes. We've been long Etsy. We've been long some great companies. Once a week, usually up there on Wednesdays, and I'll try putting a, a, a link to it in the actual chat here just so you can guys get, get, uh, get straight to it. COG as a gold play. COG as a gold play. Let's take a look at the chart. And this is, I, I, you're more, I, I hope you mean an oil play, not a gold play, because we are with an oil and gas company with Cabot. If you look at Cabot, I like the chart here. I like the way that it has performed along with uh, oil. We saw weakness in oil, a little bit of a pullback, a little bounce at uh, 1850 right now on Cabot. Let me look at the actual te technical score on the stock right now as we have it. Give me two seconds there. And ah, you're, you, you know what? The technical score right now is a six, which means we're going to see a trading range, which is exactly what we've seen for the last couple of months. You see with the trading range shifted up a little bit here, and this is as oil prices were coming up. Remember when we got through that situation with uh, OPEC plus and they said, OK, we're going to let prices go higher by decreasing demand. That is why you got that run there. And now we're back in a situation where it's trading range. I would watch Cabot Oil because, you know what, there's so much uncertainty around that oil trade right now that it's just one of those where if I get a trading range between 2250 and 18 bucks, I'm going to take the money and run every time. We break 1850, you wait until it settles out before you find your next range again. What about cannabis stocks? What about them? They've been actually moving all over the place. If you look at Tilray, Tilray has actually been putting in a little bit of a slow performance to the upside. The other one that I always look at is Canopy Growth. A little more growth, a little more pop here. I like Canopy Growth to take out the 200-day moving average. You're seeing a lot more talk about what's going to happen with marijuana um, or with cannabis here at a larger number of states as they look to reopen. That's where you're going to get companies Companies like Canopy Growth that are going to start to uh, to grow again. Right now, they've kind of tapped out the market that they've got, and I'm expecting that you'll see more of those states. Ohio is actually still kind of rabbling about it, whether or not they're going to do it or not. I think you'll probably find that Ohio will. Michigan, Illinois, you know, we're being surrounded by them now. Abercrombie and Fitch, a bad day on Friday, took out the 11, took out the 50-day moving average. I'm going to watch it this morning in terms of where it goes cut whether we get a little bit of a comeback obviously some numbers from the weekend shopping there start to get out as well this is a trading range stock that's been trading range upward so i'm willing to give it a little bit of downside and we're almost at an over oversold reading i love the volume that came in yesterday or on friday because it tells us this down bar was a washout hopefully we'll get a pullback up and i don't invest on hope so if we don't i will be moving from the position I'll check back with you in about an hour or two on that and give you more thoughts on it, um, especially uh, sending some trades to or some, if you will, updates to the Night Trader Nation. Thoughts on Ring, R-I-N-G. So this is Ring Central. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. This is the gold miners, the iShare gold miners. Again, bullish gold. Uh, I think that's all we need to say, whether you're in the GLD or the R-I-N-G which is, I've not looked, I usually don't use the ring. I use the GLD, larger assets. It's got the largest assets. Like the 50-day kind of trending up. I don't like the fact that the 20 days move back below. You're going to get the 20 coming back into play with it. Volume's been incredibly light. That's 
probably one of the reasons why that'll show when I show this chart of the GLD. We've got more volume on these shares. It continues to trade. It's a little more consistent. That's why I like that uh, stock a little more as a gold trade. But if you like the RING, look at that break above 50, the 50-day 50 uh, moving average to give you a little bit more room to the upside, probably a target of 30 is what I'm looking. Wonder if we're past the newbie FO and FOMO. Nope. I don't think we are. You know what? If you look at it and somebody mentioned, I think it was on the other in the chats, the uh, the Robin Hood. And you can get Robin Hood numbers that will show you, you know, what the most popular stock is on Robin Hood, the top 20, you know, on a daily basis and the volume that they, they uh, were trading. So you can actually monitor that if you will, FOMO, Robinhood trade and find out which stocks are really hammering. And quite frankly, I think it turns into a list of stocks where you need to watch these stocks and be aware of them more than you can uh, than, you, than you invest with them. Yeah, look, investing come down and I talk to investing with the herd and without the herd. There, there are all kinds of phrases to be used. Sometimes I use it ad nauseum. But Wayne Gretzky used to say, you always want to skate to where the puck's going to be not where the puck is. As far as I'm concerned, the people that are trading the Robinhood accounts that are following each other are all trading hunkered over the puck right now. And the puck at some point runs into a wall and all of them fall down. That is trading with the crowd. When the stock falls down, everybody falls down. That's why you try to stay a little independent and especially with the FOMO crowd because quite frankly, the only thing they have to do in most cases are follow the headlines or follow each other. So if you want an indicator, sure, look at the Robinhood top 20 traded stocks, find out what the volume is, take a look at the chart, go one extra step that the FOMO traders normally aren't doing and look at the chart. And if everybody's buying into a stock that's coming up to a declining 50 day, mm -mm, go ahead and sell that stock or short it if you like, because all of a sudden when the FOMO crowd sees it falling back down, they want to sell out, they want to get out, boom you've got an acceleration to the downside. So as for looking for tools, I think you look for tools like the uh, the list that they do publish on uh, Robinhood for that, that show you those particular stocks that are very, very popular. About silver rising, I, no, I'm not gonna forget about silver. You know, the thing about silver is that you have more of a, um, in this particular case and in any market, silver is rising. It's not as, uh, it doesn't have as, let's call it pretty, I'll say a uh, chart as gold right now there's more volatility and you know why silver took this drop a lot of people say well why silver it's silver and gold you know the guy from rudolph sings about silver and gold well guess what right here is where industry was getting slammed because of the covid 19. silver has more of an application to industrial uses and that's why you see silver get kind of slaughtered here gold has and always will have that defensive portion of it. Sure. Does it get used in industrial applications? Yes, especially technology. But it's got more of a background of having that defensive play to it as well. Watch the silver, Anthony, because silver will give you more volatility. As we start to see the industrial output go up, though, you're going to see silver climb faster than you will gold. Lenar, L-E-N for James. Lenar beat last week. If any, if people didn't see it, they beat last week. And then, and I put in L E M. They actually came out and said, we need to develop more land. That, that's our problem. So they've been vacillating around here up at the, up towards their top right now. I still have a $70 price target on the stock. The 50 days coming up to the 200 day. The two of them are going to provide support at $56 or so. Watch this. It's one of the stronger performers in the real estate or the, the home building sector. I also like LGIH and all full disclosure. We do have a position in fast profits that we opened up right here at the beginning of May, right in here. Um, so that's one of the reasons I still like the stock a little more as well. But you can look at LGIH. You can look at the uh, you can look at the actual sector itself just as a play on the sector with the ITB. The other thing is Lowe's got an upgrade this morning, guys. Lowe's getting an upgrade. Home Depot is going to get another upgrade. These are directly related with the home builder sector. Take a look at them as alternatives for home building stocks. Not, two things happen here. First of all, you've got a lot of contractors that are buying stuff for the properties they're purchasing. Second is after you and I buy those houses, and we can all speak to this, I'm sure, 
we're in the Home Depot for the next three weeks buying stuff for our house, whether it's hooks, shovels, whatever that you're putting in the garage, paint, uh, you know, furniture even, stuff for the yard, yada, yada, yada. And then we go to the Bed Bath & Beyond. So as the home builders continue to get strong, we're going to continue to see parts of the retail sector stay alive. ANF is, I've, I've got a call, Beverly, on it. I have an, a call on Abercrombie & Fitch. I think it is. I think you have to give it room to come back up, though. You know, it took a nice little hit on Friday, back up above 11, and you are going to get that stock moving again. XLP, a decent hedge idea? Absolutely. Look at what it did in February and, uh, and also in March. Sure, it came down, but it didn't come down with the same veracity. If you want to look at some individual names there, I know you guys uh, have, have heard me talking about it before. It's not sexy. It's not, there's nothing, there's a dividend, there's canned meat with it, but Hormel. Hormel now trying to charge back up towards a $50 level. That's in that consumer staples. Obviously, you can see Procter & Gamble is going to be in that and trying to do the same thing as it charges of its, above its 200-day. Let me brighten those charts. Sorry about that. I should have done that a little earlier, but trying to move above its 200 day bottom line is i think that the xlp turned into a good play here over the next couple months as we see those coronavirus uh, numbers continue to go higher uh can stocks give you a dividend absolutely they can give you a dividend you can look at uh, a company like cisco that's giving you growth potential that is going higher right we've got a, a company here networking company that's doing well one of the best in their sector, if you will, for cash flow reasons, which is what I want you to look for when you're looking for dividend. And they're paying 3.177% dividend, 3.177%. You can also look at some of the real estate uh, investment trusts out there. Um, you've got uh, DLR, which is a digital, digital realty trust. DLR, again, they store digital stuff. That we're making more digital things. 3.2% dividend yield. It's not made you much over the year in terms of growth, but that will continue into the future. They will actually begin to trend higher as the, the real estate market starts to cool off a little bit. I'm going to flip over to the chat because I'm sure there are people putting ticker symbols up over there as I guess there are. There's Barbara putting a couple up. Let me uh, scroll back just a little bit. And here we go, Daniel QRVO, and I'm going to take about five more, five or six more. We're going to roll it up to about 25 after. So QRVO, I've got to tell you, Daniel, usually I always tell you when uh, I don't know the company and it's not coming to me. Um, Hold on a second. Not coming to me right out of the gate. Semiconductor. Okay. It's in my semiconductor sector in the best in breed uh, for wireless, it looks like. So dealing with more of a Qualcomm type of thing here. Um, QR. So I'm going to gauge this along with the semiconductor sectors. And if you look at Intel, obviously, you've got a good um, comparison for charts. Very similar chart to there. Uh, Neophotonics is one of the, uh, the one that I have been actively trading myself. If I can get that PTN, which pulled back down under that $9 range and now coming back off the 200-day moving average. Hint, hint. So ORVO, let's go back to that, or QRVO. I'm sorry about that. I like the trend here in comparison with the semiconductors. Um, look at that strength on the 20-day moving average. You've got to bounce off that right now. Come off the overbought readings as well. You can see down here with the reading of 56 on the RSI. I think you probably look at this stock if we get some strength this week. Um, and this looks like it's very sensitive to uh, the trends in the semiconductor sector, which makes sense. I think you could take out that 120 range. This is definitely a trading stock, though. So you're going to get those pulls. They give you, you know, a, in this case, let's look at it. We get 24 there. We get 17% there. We get 25% there. And you get about 15 or 16 if you got up to 25%. What or a 125? What's a 125 level on that, Daniel? I think that's probably where you'd see some, um, some, uh, <laughs> sack. Some resistance coming in. Um, there we go. MVIS, MVIS. I'm not going to put a sticky note on the screen, guys. I just can't do it. There's 
already too much space being taken up. Microvision breaking up above 150 here. This is a stock that is looking in, hold on a second, some light volume. Let me see one more thing here. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, and this is what I was thinking. This uh, put this in my same list or my same silo as 3D. So let's look back again here. MVIS 150 and single dollar makes it real hard, but you got a 20 day in play, a 50 day. I just pulled up the stock uh, score on it and it's a six, which means you're gonna see some upward potential but you're also going to have a tendency to fall into a range. So your range is going to be outlined probably by the 180 by $1. 180 by $1. If you get a move up to 160, you count on something coming back down to 120 or so. The pullbacks are fast and they're ferocious here, it looks like, happening within a day or two. Didn't happen on volume here, happened on volume here. I'd expect this to keep that trend. The trend moving higher, but you're going to see a trading range in the trend. Watch the noise. Don't lose sight of the trend because of the volatility is what I say on that. So Kroger, KR, starting to make a little bit more of a comeback here simply because, again, the, uh, the people are looking at what's happening with COVID-19. Now, I'll say locally, I've noticed something here in the Kroger, and obviously I do my walk down Main Street on everybody. I've noticed that some of the other stores, the Meyer store, is now actually doing much better in terms of the social distancing, and they've got everything stocked up. I think you're going to see Kroger on this next round get a little more pressure in terms of their supply chain, and they have the supply chain to keep everything in place. But I think you're going to see people that are really trying to gear up for this. They've got more head note. They've got more advance notice. Walmart is kind of just plodding along doing what Walmart does. They're keeping the stores full. But at the same time, I think you're going to see everybody, if this comes right back around, they're going to take a little more of an approach like Kroger did. So watch for Kroger to maybe not get as much market share as they did on the uh, on the last round with the COVID-19. Eight by eight, my nemesis. Not hoping not looking, expecting this stock to continue to break down, flash us below $15 and hit 14 in short after short order after that. I love the reversal on Friday. I don't root for stocks because I look at the numbers, they tell me where we should go, and then I just follow it. So I don't root for the company to go down. Actually, almost to the opposite. My old mentor, Andy, would have probably have hit me in the back of the head with his newspaper, the Columbus Dispatch, if he saw me rooting for a stock to go down. Because that means people are losing money unless they hold puts the way I do. So that's not a nice way to look at it. But I'm expecting this to play out the way the numbers laid it out for us, which means it ends up somewhere in the $13 range before that option expires in August. So love the, uh, the rejection. I wasn't cheering. It's going to break down below 15 bucks, I hope, today, and we'll see what happens, and we'll pick that one back up in the morning. Um, HD, yes, love the pullback on Home Depot. I, I don't know the reason why I didn't see it on the news headline this morning. We'll see where it settles out as the trading starts. It's breaking down below that 20-day. I'd like to actually see it if it could pull back to the $230. You'd have the 50-day coming in. Lowe's has really been knocking Home Depot around here a little bit. If you look at the charts, Lowe's is going to be doing a little bit better here. I think that Lowe's is slowly becoming the favorite, and Home Depot is giving up some of that share. But 230 on Home Depot, uh, also the one that we haven't talked about in a long time, Costco in the retail sector. What's happened to Costco? It's kind of lost its way here. Trading down below the 200-day moving average. This is one that if you own it, you want to be selling calls on it, I think, just to generate some income right now. The trends are definitely turning against Costco like I haven't seen them turn in a while. Thoughts on Plug Power. This is one of my favorite stocks. I love Plug Power, love Ballard, love a couple of these alternatives. I think that because of the net, the, the rollout with Nikola that happened a couple weeks ago, um, it's give, putting more light in this sector, the alternative energy sector. I like I really do like Plug Power, and I own the shares, full disclosure. I like it to head towards $8 to even $9 uh, before the end of the year right now. Gaining momentum, short terms turning higher, 200-day moving average is turning higher. Let's see where they are with their monthly, uh, and they are above the 10 and the 20-month moving averages. So they are officially in bull market territory. 
love plug power. Um, two more. We get plug power. Barb wants to see SC. I'm sure that Zachary wants to see SC as well. It keeps going up. It keeps going up. We're leveling off around 110. Maybe it pulls back to 100. This thing has been overbought for the last two weeks. Uh, volumes remained high. You can see the volume uh, trend is level here. I think that if you start to see volume drop off on this a little bit, you're going to see it pull back to 100. And you put in a limit order at 100 and let it run up to 120, which is what it's going to do. It's what it's going to do. Zachary nailed it on that one. Good job, buddy. And the last one for the day, Zoom. Communication started to do the same thing, leveling off here. We know this is one of the more tradable stocks out there. Look for an entry at the 20-day moving average. Don't get too nervous and think that you have to buy it if it pulls back 2 or 3% because what happens is the volume's been dropping off as that normally happens here. The drop, volume's dropping off. Leveled here, you saw a drop in volume there. You saw a bit of a drop actually here right before we started seeing the sell-off. Watch that volume to drop a little bit. It means the stock is not getting supported at its current levels. It'll be quick turnaround. The volume picks up immediately, and then we'll crescendo, and that's where we buy in. I think you set your your buy your buy orders at around two hundred five, maybe even two ten. You might get in a little early if uh, if um, if you uh, get in at two ten. You might be a little early, but you know what? They've been making money all the way, so that's. That's what it's all about. Oh my gosh, Uber, Uber, Uber. I'll hit one more just, just because you asked three times, William. Uber, watch around with Uber. Uh, look at the, the range it's trading in. I've been staying away from Uber. It's not giving you much to trade. No volatility here. You hit a spate of volatility here. Now it's going to trade sideways. Too much going on with Uber in terms of what they're going to do over the next uh, six months, next year. Um, you know, Uber Eats, gone, or at least the the them buying um, DoorDash, gone. I, I think they're worried a little bit about the the anti, um, you know, the, any, the regulatory environment, let's just say, not just the antitrust, but the regulatory environment, as well as another outbreak in COVID-19 is really going to deliver another stark blow for the company. So I think Uber is one that you sit there and watch as a as a spectator for right now and maybe take a position in it when it is pulled back considerably and by considerably i mean maybe down to the 25 level that's where i'd start looking all right hey that's it guys you got one minute till the market opens i gotta get busy trading take a look at some new uh signals for the night trader system get ready for my 11 o'clock live stream with my night trader people as well i won't be with you tomorrow remember tuesday mornings off wednesday morning 8 45 i'll be back with you of course my 11 o'clock people I'll be with very soon here. Look forward to seeing you. Hope that you have a great day and always wish you the best trading success. Have a great one, folks.